How do dogs and wolves communicate? Comparison and differences. Some days it feels like dogs can read our minds. They nuzzle us when we're sad or get pumped at walk time. Other days, the language barrier between our species is starker than ever. We say, come inside, and they refuse. Or we say, no chewing, and they dig into our shoes anyway. Understanding dog body language is the first step in knowing how to respond. Our advice, be observant and patient. You're not a mind reader either. In this video, I will tell you what noises dogs use to tell us some important things, what body language they use, as well as how do the main relatives of dogs communicate, wolves. What are the similarities and differences between dogs and wolves' behavior? Take a cup of hot tea and enjoy this video. Interesting fact, scientists have found some key friendliness genes in dogs that distinguish them from wolves. A study published in July 2017 concluded that there are genetic similarities between domesticated dogs and humans with Williams-Buren syndrome WBS, a multi-system congenital disorder characterized by hypersocial behavior. Wow, sometimes that really looks like this when your puppy desperately needs some communication. So let's explore how dogs can communicate. The Bark Truthfully, domestic dogs bark for a variety of reasons. Dogs can bark to signal that they want something or that a particular need isn't met, such as food or water. They use their ability to bark, then to get your attention so that you will fulfill or help them fulfill their need. Dogs also bark to signal their emotional state. An excited dog might bark to show you his or her level of excitement, just like an anxious dog might bark to communicate his or her discomfort. Furthermore, barking might be induced by environmental cues, such as another dog barking or a car horn. Whine Whining may be the closest thing dogs have to real human words. More often than not, it indicates a specific want. Is Sadie pacing and whining about her food bowl? Girl's hungry! Is she whining at the back door? She's ready to go out! If your dog constantly whines only when you leave the house, she could be trying to tell you she's afraid to be alone. If she stops eating her food and whines at dinner time, she may have internal health issues. Whining can be a submissive behavior, a way of saying, you're the boss when you scold your dog for chewing your shoes or tipping over the trash can, they might whine as part of their apology. This behavior comes from dogs' ancestors, wolves, and we will explore wolves' behavior in this video as well. Wolves can be shunned from the pack when they break the pack rules, like biting too hard during play. To be accepted back in, a wolf will bow their head and put their tail between their legs. This is the same posture our dogs display when they look guilty. Beside whining, dogs can do a lot of other noises for different reasons. It's tempting to compare human sounds and dog sounds, which can be confusing. For instance, dogs typically yawn when they are nervous, not tired, but when it comes to the sigh, we seem to be on the same wavelength. Think about the last time you settled onto a particularly comfortable couch. Did you sigh in contentment? Or what about a moment when things didn't go your way? Did you let out a sigh or groan of disappointment or exasperation? The growl. At first glance, the growl seems straightforward. Growls can mean, stay back, stop touching me, or I will bite you if you come closer. Of course, in play, a growl can also mean, look how very dead I have made this rope toy. Pull harder! Growls are a warning and dogs that are punished too often for growling may decide to just skip to the next warning level, the bite. The howl. Wolves howl to communicate with their packs and possibly to express a wider range of emotions than we currently understand. Dogs howl for similar reasons. Dogs that howl when their owners leave them behind could be trying to communicate with their people, and howling among dogs seems to be contagious, just like it is for wolves. <laughs> the 
Breeds that howl are usually trying to communicate with other dogs. Sometimes it's to get their owner's attention. Other times it's in a response to sounds like sirens or other dogs. The sigh and the groan. Dogs sigh and groan to show contentment and disappointment. Puppies moan and groan when they are settling down for a nap, and adults may sigh as they relax in your lap or onto their dog beds. If your dog pesters you to play or go for a walk, however, and then flops down on the ground and lets out a long sigh or groan, she could be disappointed that she's not gotten what she wants. Honestly, this noise is as straightforward as it gets. You'll often hear it as a dog plops down onto her bed just after you've told her to lie down. She's a little annoyed, but settling in nonetheless. Baying. Baying is a long, deep, and throaty barking noise that dogs make when they are pursuing prey. For instance, basset hounds, beagles, bloodhounds, foxhounds, and other scent dogs bay to let their human companions know they are hot on the trail. Dogs might also bay when they perceive a threat, such as an unfamiliar person encroaching on their territory. Honking. A dog honking like a goose can sound awfully silly, but it can be a sign of a serious problem called tracheal collapse. This happens when the rings of cartilage in the trachea or windpipe cave in and make it difficult to breathe. If your dog is honking, you should visit your veterinarian. <laughs> Reverse sneezing. Reverse sneezing is actually not a sneeze at all. This noise, which sounds like a long, drawn-out snort, is caused by a spasm of the soft palate. <laughs> During this spasm, the airway narrows, making it hard for the dogs to breathe. It's more common in dogs with short muzzles such as Shih Tzu, Chihuahuas, Bulldogs, and Boston Terriers. Okay. Are you better now? Can you sit? Are you ready for your greenie? Sneezing. Pet sneeze is the same thing as a people sneeze. It's an involuntary expulsion of air through the nose and mouth. A chew. If your pet sneezes now and then, just tell them gazoon tide and go on with your day. <laughs> Got a little swollen in your face there. Did you get stung by a bee? If the sneezing is excessive or there are other symptoms, such as a runny nose or eyes, talk to your veterinarian. Okay, we've explored some usual and unusual dog sounds. But what about body language? Deciphering dog body language is an important part of communicating with your canine. Understanding your dog's body language is a key aspect of responsible ownership. More often though, dogs rely on nonverbal body language. That can lead to plenty of human dog misunderstandings. Sometimes dog body language is simply unfamiliar. After all, people don't have tails. At other times, it's in direct contrast with what that same signal means to a human, such as with yawning or looking away. To better communicate with your canine companion, learn some tips on reading dog body language. Tail wagging. Tail wagging seems like an obvious body language signal. If a dog's tail is wagging, the dog is happy, right? Wrong. People misinterpret this signal all the time. All a wagging tail means is that the dog is emotionally aroused. It could be excitement, but it could be frustration or worse. To interpret the dog's emotions and intentions, look at the speed and direction of the wag as well as the position of the tail. Basically, the faster the wag, the more aroused the dog. Think about those long, slow, side-to-side -side tail sweeps your dog makes when greeting you. The type that wag the dog's whole body. That's a relaxed dog. 
A faster, twitch-like wag indicates a higher level of arousal and possibly in a negative way. Think of a guard dog on alert. <laughs> the direction of the wag may hold clues as well. A recent study on tail wagging showed that dogs tend to wag more to the right when they feel positive about something, like interacting with their owner. Tails wagged more to the left are when dogs are faced with something negative. Then there's the helicopter tail wag where the dog's tail spins in a circle. Without question, that's a happy wag. You'll usually see it when a dog is greeting a beloved person. Finally, the position of the dog's tail relative to the ground holds important clues about their emotional state. Essentially, the higher the tail, the more assertive the dog. Dogs with their tails pointing down to the ground or even tucked between their legs are feeling fear and stress. Dogs with their tails held up like a flag are feeling confident, perhaps even aggressive. Relaxed dogs hold their tails in a neutral position, but neutral depends on the breed. Some breeds, like Chow Chows, have tails that naturally curl over their backs, whereas breeds like the Italian Greyhound have a very low neutral tail position. If you get to know your dog's neutral tail position, you will more quickly recognize when their emotions have shifted. Raised Hackles When a dog's hackles are raised, it means the hair along their back is standing up. Technically called piloerection, the fur can fluff up across the shoulders or down the back and all the way to the tail. This is a definite sign that the dog is aroused, but not necessarily in a negative way. The dog might be upset or stressed, but could also be excited or intensely interested in something. It's often an involuntary reaction, like goosebumps in people. Facial Expressions Dogs have similar facial features as people, but they don't use them in the same way. Consider yawning. People yawn when they're tired or bored, but dogs yawn when they're stressed. According to Turid Rugas, author on talking terms with dogs, calming signals, dogs use yawning to calm themselves in tense situations and to calm others, including their owners. She suggests yawning at your dog to provide comfort at stressful moments like a vet visit, but don't be surprised if your dog yawns back. Just as yawning is contagious in people, dogs can catch yawns too. Lip licking is another bit of dog body language that people often misinterpret. Just like people, dogs will lick their lips after a delicious meal, but they will also do it when they feel anxious. Sometimes the tongue flick is so quick it's tricky to notice. Your dog isn't signaling a desire to lick your face, but rather discomfort with a given situation. The most confusing facial expression is smiling. Yes, some dogs smile, and if you're not familiar with the expression, it can look terrifying. Usually, when dogs bare their teeth, it serves as a warning, as if they're saying, look at my weapons. Good dog. Yeah, she's smiling. She's smiling. Yes, yeah, she is. It's hard to mistake the aggressive intention of a snarl, especially when it's paired with a menacing growl. The corners of the dog's lips form the shape of a C, and the front teeth are fully displayed. Smiling dogs also display their front teeth, but the meaning is the complete opposite, also known as a submissive grin. This expression is often found on a happy dog with a loose and wiggly posture. The dog's overall attitude says, Hello, I come in peace. Eyes You can learn a lot about your dog's internal state by looking at the eyes. First, a dog's eyes can be soft or hard. Soft eyes have relaxed lids and sometimes look like the dog is squinting. They indicate the dog is calm or happy. The opposite is hard eyes where the eyes seem to go cold. These indicate a negative state of mind, and you'll know them when you see them. The dog might be guarding a toy or feeling aggressive. A hard stare, where the dog looks intently at something, especially for a long time, usually signals a threat. Eye contact is an important signal for dogs. Just as the hard stare can be a precursor to aggression, looking away is meant to calm a situation. When dogs feel stressed, they will pointedly look away and avoid eye contact. People often interpret this as their dog ignoring them or being stubborn, but the dog is expressing discomfort. The whites of the eyes are another key indicator. Known as whale eye, when a dog shows the whites of the eyes, it's a signal they are feeling anxious or stressed in a situation. You might see them when you make your dog uncomfortable, like when you pat your dog on the head, or when they're afraid someone will steal a bone or toy. None of these dog body language signals act alone. 
They're all part of a package. So when you read a dog's communication, look at every signal the dog is using from the tail height to the eye shape. Your dog is talking to you all the time. If you learn what your dog is saying, you will develop a deeper bond of trust and respect. Plus, your newfound understanding of your dog's emotional state will help you predict your dog's behavior and prevent problems before they occur. Oh, have you seen dogs jump up to greet their owners, bark at strangers, or roll over when another dog approaches? Then you already know something about how wolves communicate. Dogs inherited most of their language from their ancestors, the wolves. How do they converse? Even though they cannot talk or write, wolves communicate effectively in several ways. Do wolves bark? Why do they howl? Touch the little girl. No. It seems like a simple question, but it's more complicated than you might think. Wolves can, technically, bark. However, this might not be considered the same barking we hear from our more domesticated canines. So what does a wolf bark sound like? And why exactly do they do it? In what ways does it differ from a dog's bark? To answer these questions and more, we need to dive into the depths of wolf communication, the evolution of domestic dogs, and the why behind barking. Can wolves bark? Wolves use a wide range of vocalizations to communicate with their companions. This includes actions such as growls, whines, yips, whimpers, howls, and barks. A wolf's voice box is not that biologically different from a dog. They can, just like our furry friends, bark. However, this does not mean that they bark often, just that they physically can bark. However, it is relatively rare to hear a wolf bark. Barking doesn't just fulfill the same communication needs for wolves as it does for dogs. To figure out why, let's look at some forms of wolf communication. Why do wolves bark? So, why do wolves bark? And why do they not do it as often as our domesticated canines? At the base, a wolf bark is used to express alarm. If a wolf suddenly gets scared or surprised, they might bark. In the same way that we might jump during a scary movie, a wolf might bark when an animal suddenly runs from behind a tree. Barks are also usually used by mother wolves to communicate with her pups. If the puppy does something he or she isn't supposed to do or is in danger, the mother wolf might bark to instruct them against the behavior or warn them of the danger. On top of this, barks are commonly combined with other sounds. A bark howl, for example, might be used to defend pack territory without intending the warning to be heard a long distance away. A wolf might also combine a whimper and a bark in order to indicate surprise and or submission. By combining sounds like this, they can add an even greater depth to their communication. Why do wolves howl? Vocalizations are extremely important for wolf communication. Each wolf sound has a particular meaning and is used in a specific context. The sound that comes to many people's minds when they think of wolves is howling. Howling is a very important sound in wolf communication. It is used to gather wolves of the same pack together, mourn lost pack members, and claim territory. Howls can sometimes occur among lone individuals. However, they quickly evolve to include the whole pack. Howls, as well, also allow wolves to communicate across large distances. They can be heard from many miles away, and this helps gather lost pack members and tell wolves of other packs to keep away. Often when a howl has ended, it is clear that wolves pause and carefully listen for a response. By the way, when you hear a wolf howl in the night, they're not howling at the moon, they are communicating. They call any time of the day, but they are most easily heard in the evening when the wind dies down and wolves are most active. Do wolves make other sounds? A wolf's day is generally full of many types of sounds. Whines and whimpers are commonly used in friendly interactions as a way to get the attention of other, friendly wolves. These sounds, though, can also be used to indicate frustration and anxiety. The meaning is largely dependent on both the situation and body language of the wolf. This really reminds of the dog's way of whining, doesn't it? Growls and snarls can be both threatening and defensive. Surprisingly, they use these most commonly among their own pack mates. This is because the social pecking order within a pack is extremely important. Without a clear hierarchy, things just wouldn't work correctly. Growling and snarling, then, ensures that every member of the pack knows their place. 
Whimpering may be used by a mother to indicate her willingness to nurse her young. It's also used to indicate, I give up, if they are in a submissive position and another wolf is dominating them. Why do dogs bark more than wolves? Once dogs become domesticated and began living around humans, their social group changed substantially. Humans became their partners and their communication needs changed because of this. In this way, dogs quickly began to understand that humans understood barking the best. It was louder than a whimper and faster than howling. Dogs who adopted the new communication pattern survived and bred. They taught their pups how to communicate and the new communication pattern became widespread. So, because of that, they use barking substantially more than their wolf cousins. Wolf Body Language Wolves convey much with their bodies. If they are angry, they may stick their ears straight up and bare their teeth. A wolf who is suspicious pulls its ears back and squints. A wolf's posture, when interacting with fellow pack members, says a lot about its status in the pack. Subordinates crouch, trying to appear as small as possible and often lick the dominant wolf's muzzle like a puppy, while alphas are readily identifiable as they broadcast confidence with their tall posture, stiff-legged gaits, and tails sticking out and slightly raised. Wolves frequently use ear and tail positioning, as well as facial expressions, to communicate. For example, ears flat back, close to the head with the tail tucked between the legs, accompanied by a slinking, slumping body posture, communicates submission. Ears perked up or forward with the tail straight out and slightly up indicates dominance. Ears sticking straight up or low and out to the side, teeth bared and a wrinkled snout, clearly communicates a very cross and threatening message. Sometimes the lips will slightly curl, revealing just a few teeth as an initial warning, which is often all that is needed to send a clear message. And a reciprocating lick to the nose by the submissive wolf may help diffuse tension and avoid escalation. When seeking to play with a fellow packmate, a wolf will often stretch their front legs out and raise their hindquarters in the air in what is called a play bow. Play can include a game of chase, or it can involve jaw sparring from high-energy duels where two wolves will rear up on their hind legs and engage their front legs and jaws, to casual jaw sparring even while lying and rolling on the ground. A range of whining, groaning, and growling vocalizations usually accompanies jaw sparring. All of this fortifies bonds and status and hones physical skills. Most commonly, wolves are relaxed. Their ears may also be off to the side, but a relaxed body and a neutral or wagging tail communicate a calm disposition. Not surprisingly, much of these same complex communication skills can also be observed in your family companion, the dog. The Chemical Trail of Scent Wolves have a very good sense of smell, about 100 times greater than humans. They use this sense for communication in a variety of ways. Wolves mark their territories with urine and scat, a behavior called scent marking. When wolves from outside of the pack smell these scents, they know that an area is already occupied. It is likely that pack members can recognize the identity of a packmate by its urine, which is useful when entering new territory or when pack members become separated. Dominant animals may scent mark through urination every two minutes. When they do so, they raise a leg. This dominant posture utilizes multiple forms of communication and is called a raised leg urination or RLU. Okay, now we know how dogs and wolves can communicate inside their species and why they do it. But what about their communication with each other? Can wolves and dogs understand each other? Pretty interesting questions, right? Can dogs understand wolves? Dogs and wolves are close ancestors, so it makes sense to wonder if dogs and wolves can understand and communicate with one another if given the opportunity. There are plenty of times we see dogs showing wolf-like behavior and wolves displaying domestic dog-like behavior, even if slight variations in this behavior do exist. Maybe your dog likes to howl when they are trying to speak to you or want a treat. It has been found that wolves and dogs can actually understand each other well, at least for the most part. Since they are so far removed from one another, there are differences in the language and communication style for obvious reasons. Signs of dogs and wolves understanding each other There are a few key things you can watch out for in your pup that are reminiscent of their wolf ancestors. It's likely your dog loves to lick your face when greeting you, especially if they have not seen you in a while. It is found that wolves in the wild also like to greet their pack by licking the other's face. Furthermore, your dog generally will hold your gaze and follow your eye movements when you look at them, and wolves will do this as well if they are around humans. They will even follow the gaze of other wolves in their pack as well. 
Wolves can also understand finger pointing, just like your pooch can when you point to where their toy is or where you want them to sit. If you have a dog that is a howler, this is a very similar trait they share with wolves. Wolves howl in the wild for a multitude of different reasons all the time. Wolves and dogs also share similar body language communication. Besides howling, both species will play bow when they are ready to play and have fun. Both will also chase each other and chase their tails when they are looking to have fun. Dogs and wolves also have the same body language when they are showing their dominance, submission, and aggression. This could be anything from growling, showing teeth, guarding, or pacing. All of these similarities display how wolves and dogs can understand each other in some ways and could effectively communicate with each other. It's important to remember that since dogs and wolves are two very different species, and the chance of miscommunication through body language can still be misinterpreted. Wolves and dogs are separated by about 15,000 years of evolution. During the evolution process, both dogs and wolves have taken two very distinct turns into different species. Due to the interaction of wolves and humans living in close proximity and actively living together for much of the time, the wolf started to morph into the domesticated dog we know today. Their heads shrank, their teeth became smaller, and they became docile, loving, and cuddly. We still have a lot to learn about the history and evolution of wolves and dogs and how much time it actually took to live with and love the dogs we know so well today. On another note, dogs and wolves' genes are 98.9% .9 the same. Since there is such a high percentage of similarity that dogs and wolves share, many of the same physical traits, communication styles, social interaction, territorial instincts, and behaviors are still the same. Through more studies, it was also found that wolves and dogs can understand each other in the sense they can both cultivate human attachment to their caretakers, although wolves are less dependent on their human caretaker than a dog is. Scientists did an experiment to prove this hypothesis by having wolf cubs raised by humans. The wolf puppies were raised exactly how one would raise a regular dog. They also were heavily socialized by humans, so any inherent differences between wolves and dogs would be instinctual. The study found the wolf puppies readily greeted their caregivers with love, affection, and excitement. The same goes for strangers that were introduced to the wolves. The only differences between the wolves and pups in their greetings were the wolves were a bit more scared of the complete strangers compared to the dogs. None showed any aggression, just like we would expect to see in a dog. Training dogs and wolves to communicate Unfortunately, there is no way at this time to train dogs and wolves to communicate or understand each other, and it is something that is never advised to do. Although they share many traits, communication styles, and genes, they are two inherently different species, and wolves, especially those that are wild, can be very dangerous. Both wolves and dogs use many of the same signals, and they often mean the same things. However, dogs have been put through the wood chipper of the domestication process, so their language and behavior may no longer be exactly the same as that of their wolf ancestors. Picture dogs as speaking a somewhat pigeon or baby talk dialect of the wolf's language. However, large, simple concepts like don't eat me, hi there friend, let's play, and go away are generally very similar and can be read between both species. Be aware that wolves tend to be bigger, faster, stronger, and more, well, wild than domesticated dogs. So not every dog has the set of equipment necessary to live with a wolf. Introducing a chihuahua to a wolf is unlikely to work out well whether they can theoretically understand each other's body language or not. Introducing a husky or malamute to a wolf is much more likely, though not guaranteed, to work out. It is arguably one of modern pet marketing's most reliable angle. Put a picture of a wolf on about anything designed for the canine species and it's a hit. But how much does your Pomeranian really have in common with Canis lupus? Similarities between dogs and wolves Dogs and wolves have many outward similarities. After all, the two species descend from a common ancestor. In fact, the two species share 98.8% of the same DNA. They can even interbreed, although their offspring are typically not fertile. Dogs of similar size to a wolf share a similar life expectancy, 12 to 14 years in captivity. They both display similar body language at times and share an impeccable sense of smell. Both species also thrive within a pack environment and exhibit a prey drive. When you start to really dig though, there are no bones about it, dogs and wolves may be more different than they are the same. But there are some big differences. Despite how similar dogs and wolves may appear at first glance though, there are many major differences between the two species. Even though they share ancestry, dogs have spent hundreds of years evolving with humans, unlike their wolf brethren. 
Dogs maintain many puppy-like traits throughout life that humans have selected for inadvertently and intentionally, such as floppy ears, shorter noses, and goofy dispositions. Dogs are less fearful and more playful than their wolf cousins. Wolves have yellow eyes, whereas dogs more commonly have brown or blue eyes. Wolves are built to run with narrow chests and long legs, whereas the domestic dog tends to be wider and stockier. Wolves tend to be shy as opposed to their boisterous counterparts. Dogs observe and respond to human facial expressions and body language. Wolves form stronger family units within their pack, while dogs tend to form a stronger relationship with people. Dogs reach maturity at six to eight months of age, whereas wolves do not mature until two to three years old. Dogs have a higher ability to digest a wide variety of food, including grains. The more you explore the differences between the two species, the more it becomes apparent that they are really not the same thing at all. We have bred our household dogs to suit our needs and lifestyles, and it is important to remember that they need us as well. Wolves may not need dental care, parasite prevention, or vaccines, but your dog is not a wolf. But we couldn't imagine life without our furry, albeit domesticated friends. If you like this video, show us that, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so yet. Thank you for watching, and see you!